Okay, today we are going to talk about sugar skulls, Day of the Dead sugar skulls. And we are going to talk briefly about value, so showing the range from darks to lights. You guys have already completed your value handout, so you should be familiar with lights and darks. But we're also going to talk about contrast, and contrast is the difference between light and dark. So value and contrast are very important in this project. You will be graded on using those two terms correctly. Can someone tell me why they had used the Day of the Dead skulls? Why were they important? If you raise your hand and let me know. Good. So it was a way that they honored and reached out to the people who have passed. And who was first to use them? People in Mexico? Do you guys know which part? Is it in the article? Okay, so while you're looking for that, I'm going to go ahead and talk about how you guys are going to draw your skull. You have two options. You could freehand draw it, which means looking at an image on your iPad and trying to draw it without tracing. Or you could go ahead and trace it. I have a few options for you guys to use. I went ahead and printed a few different designs for you. So here is one. It's got the traditional flowers, the designs on the side. It's got some keyholes in the heart eyes, which is not very traditional, but I liked them, so I used it. Then we have one with the flowers in the eyes, which is more traditional for the sugar skulls. And then this is very traditional to have the teeth, and then the flowers on the side, and the designs. And last but not least, you can use this one. Another thing that I haven't pointed out yet, um, the upside down heart was very traditional for the nose, so that was commonly used in the sugar skulls. Flowers again were commonly used, and then normally they had um, some type of design inside the eye. The eye could be black, it could have color, it's up to you how you guys are going to do that. This is the example that I'm showing you guys from a past class. They didn't use as much color. They only used a slight touch of color. Um, but they do have that nice range of value and the use of contrast. So that's what I am looking for. If you like one of these, what you would do is you would put it under your paper. You could go ahead and use our light if you can't see it, or you can use the window to help make it a little bit more transparent. Or, like I said on Friday, you guys can use these tracing tools that I found at Michael's store, and then you would just put it down and trace. I'm going to use this one because I like this one better, and I'm going to add flowers in the face. So I'm just going to go ahead and center my paper, and I'm going to go ahead and use pencil to go around all the images that I like. This might be good if you want to just get the skull shape and do your own design in the inside. It'll allow you for more freedom. Again, if you want to free draw a hand by yourself, you can al always do that. This is just an option to help you if you are struggling with getting the shape.
you can't really see it, but I'll hold it up closer so you can see it a little better. So I have my pencil drawing done. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a ruler and I'm gonna draw lines throughout my entire image. So these lines, there's no right or wrong way to draw them. They just have to go from one side of the paper to the other. The amount of space, oh, I forgot a tooth. The amount of space that you guys are creating, each of these different shapes that you're making have to be shaded in a different direction. So keep that in mind as you're drawing your lines. You don't want to put too many because then you're going to have a lot of different directions to shade. Okay, so I've got my sections now. So every single section I just made has to be shaded in a different direction. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to start with my ebony pencil. Ebony pencils are a little bit softer, so I'm going to go ahead and put some paper underneath so it, I could have a nice solid background. This is the pencils that you guys are using. They're Prismacolor, which is a really good brand. Yes. What? You'll see it because you're still going to be outlining it. Can you sharpen this for me, please? Thank you. So I have to sharpen it because I just opened these. Thank you. So it's nice and sharp. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make this section my darkest section. I'm going to put a lot of pressure where it's supposed to be the darkest. And then <clears throat> as I go further up, I'm going to lighten my pressure. I want to make sure, just like in our value scale, that we're leaving some pure whites. So it should be dark gray, light gray, and white. You can even go as far to go black, dark gray, medium gray, light gray, and then white. So you want to have a lot of range, because that's what value is. It's the range of darks and lights. And then the contrast of your images and your colors are going to start to form the outline of your skull. So if you do one area dark, you have to make sure the area next to it is light so that it contrasts. Try to be as straight as possible. If you mess up, you could always erase. Okay, so I, I went a little bit outside my line, so I'm going to go ahead and tidy that up. And I made this a little too dark, so I'm going to erase it so that I have some of those pure whites that I was talking about. I'm 
And then I'm gonna do my next section. So my next section is this triangle right here. Since I have dark here, I'm gonna make sure that this is light so that it contrasts. So this time, I'm actually gonna turn my paper and I am going to do my dark section at this edge of the paper. Notice that I put a piece of paper underneath so that I'm not getting my desk dirty. And just do the same process. And then at the very bottom, that's going to stay white. So it's just a lot of blending and showing value and showing contrast within the work. What color do you think I should make this section right here? Blue. No, I mean what? Dark or light? Dark. I heard dark and I heard light. Which one do you think? Raise your hand if you think dark. Yeah, I would use dark. So, the reason I would use dark, I'm going to go a little closer. Even though this is dark here, this part doesn't really touch this as much as these sides do. So, if I make this dark, it's still going to stand out. So, those are the type of decisions that you guys are going to have to make for your project. I'm not going to tell you which area to shade dark or light. You guys are going to have to make those choices. So I want you guys to be a little bit independent with deciding how to color this. Alright, so I'm going to do a little bit of the skull. I think you guys are starting to see what the background is going to look like. Lots of blending and shading. The skull you can actually add in color. So let me show you this one again just so you can see where the color was added. It's a little bit of orange and pink and green. You guys can make it a little brighter if you like color more. I like color a lot. So, And the Day of the Dead Skulls are typically really colorful. 
So we're going to be using these sticks. <laughs> this is the box. They're called um, art sticks. They're woodless color pencils by Prismacolor. You can also use colored pencils as well if you have a color that you like. So let's say I want these to be purple. I'm going to go ahead and make those purple. I'm using the corners. I'm going to do this whole section right here. <laughs> These are actually a little harder than colored pencils to use because they're square. You can use colored pencil if you don't like them. And even though this is the same design, right here, the swirl, I'm going to stop it and only do this section green. In this section, I'm actually going to do another color. So that's how we're going to tell the color sections apart. I'm going over my light green and I'm blending the dark green with it. What color do you guys want me to make the circles? Blue? So blue, we're going to get our blue. And then last but not least, I have these little inside designs. What other color? I have blue, green, and purple so far. What other color do you guys like? Somebody answer. What other color? We have blue, green, and purple. Uh, pink. Pink. All right. Did you want a different color? There's yeah. there's more than one spot I can color. I said red. red. Pink. Pink and red. Okay. We'll use pink and red. Get a little red. And then pink.
And last but not least, I heard orange, so I'm gonna add yellow orange. I did. It's not. You can't see it very well. I can make this red too over here. Does it say in the article why they use the colors they used? I don't know. I didn't. I don't know why they used those colors. But I do know that I wanted to draw some flowers in my eyes because I like this look of these flowers. So I'm gonna draw a really quick flower. Alright, and now, last but not least, I'm going to add my ebony. So this is what I wanted to show you guys, how you can do the value within the face at the same time you're making color. One second. Let me finish the video, and then I'll help or sign it. So this section is going to be dark, and then I'm going to fade to light. A <laughs> uh, congratulations to everyone who played in the Powder Puff game. Thank you. We won. I heard Glory's name a lot, so that must mean that you were doing a good job. <laughs> Who made that 
that last touchdown? Nora? I don't know her. So as you can see, this takes a long time and you have to be patient. So I'm still working on one of my sections going to fade slowly into light. This whole section over here is going to be light. But I'm taking my time so that I don't mess up just like you guys should. Making nice, clean, straight lines on the sides. Bless you. This is tough. Kind of makes your arm hurt after a while. You can also use your finger to do some blending, especially when you're getting closer to the white. Any questions before I stop the video? No questions, I'm gonna hand out the papers, good luck. 